So look at this pouch. Inside here is a lovely small lens that we're just going off to London with. I've not been around a while. I've had my second bout of COVID. So I'm now recovered again. So this lens is a 25 millimeter manual focus lens. The f-stops go from f1.8 all the way through to f16. So we're going to get this onto the Canon M50 Mark II and get off to London and let's see what this lovely little lens, look at the size of it, can do. So I'll see you in a moment. So that was a few warm up shots just to get started. Now I'm using what's called zone focusing. So I've set my focus point at nine feet and then everything's in focus from about five and a half feet through to about 25 feet. I've set my shutter speed to one over three twentieth of a second. Later in the day, I did change that to one over two fiftieth of a second. My ISO is on auto. So I downloaded an app called Set My Camera and then you enter in your camera, which is what I'm showing you here. And then you enter the size of the lens. So it's a 25 millimeter prime lens. Then you set your f-stop, which I've set to f8 on the lens itself. And then you set your focus point. In my case, I've set it to nine feet. And then you'll see at the top, as I set it to nine feet, I've got everything between five and a half to about 25 and a half feet in focus. So by setting that up, setting your f-stop, setting your shutter speed, and your ISO is the bit that's automatic, then all you do is point and shoot as long as everything that you're shooting is within that zone. So that's called zone focusing. And it's really handy with this camera to set it up like this. You haven't got to worry about anything at all apart from making sure your subjects are in that zone. So what you can see here is the shutter speed stays the same, 320, which is ideal for street photography as it just freezes that motion. Then I've got the f-stop on f8, so I've got a nice deep depth of field. And then you'll see that the ISO is just changing automatically. And as long as I've got everything in that zone, I can just point and shoot. So it's like using an automatic mode while you're in manual mode because it's just the ISO that's changing. So this worked out really well and you can see how the ISO is changing as the light's changing. with a 25 millimeter yes you've got to stand a little bit closer to your subjects but there's this argument that you capture more of the scene if you've got a 25 millimeter as opposed to let's say a 56 millimeter When you're using a manual focus lens on the Canon M50, you need to make sure that the shutter will release without a lens. 
Now you only really want to do this if you are using a manual lens because you don't want to accidentally release the shutter with uh, no lens on there. But nevertheless, we've got to do this. So if you press the menu and then you need to come across to the spanner and then click OK. And if you come across to number five, and the function settings and then come down to custom functions press that one and then you've got release shutter without lens if you press ok press the ok or the set button then you've got the choice between disable and enable so by default it's disabled and you need to come down to enable and then the other setting that i think is useful when you're using a manual focus is focus peaking. So to get this, you need to come across to the shooting settings, come across to number five in the shooting settings, and you've got manual focus peaking settings. And then you want to turn that on. I leave the level as high and you can choose a color, red, yellow or blue i actually leave mine on red because i find that quite useful and when you've got both of those set you're nicely set up for using your manual focus lens now the peaking settings is really good because if i just take the lens cover off of this Focus. I don't know if you can see that, but as I turn the focus ring, you can see areas going red. The red areas are the ones that's in focus. So as you can see, even with high ISOs, the images came out pretty sharp. You can see this one is 1250, which is quite high, but it was still a really sharp image. So this lens is working really well on this camera. And I haven't got to worry about anything at all apart from pointing and shooting. A bit like this one, I could just lift the camera up and shoot. And as I was walking past the subjects and this one as well, I was right close to the subject, but just didn't even notice. With street photography they always say look behind you and look up but don't forget to always look down like this photo and this photo because they can tell stories as well and sometimes you've got to wait around for the right character which is what I did here and then on this next one I got this bike and somebody running past but I waited because I really wanted a bike to come past and there it was, that was the shot I was waiting for and I had to wait about 10 minutes for this shot. And now in this building or next to this building we've got mirrors all the way round and I just had to play around with some reflection shots which was really good and the camera and the lens handled it really well. And I did not have to change anything, I just let the ISO change itself. And again for this next one I waited about 10 minutes for somebody to walk past because I loved the background and that worked out really well. And I just had to take this street shot, it's the reflection of the whole building opposite was absolutely brilliant and then we've got a leading line up to tower bridge 
and one more just to finish the day off so if you enjoyed the video please give me the thumbs up and if you haven't subscribed please consider subscribing and clicking that notification bell and i look forward to seeing you in the next video